I gave a talk in Oregon a couple years ago, and this guy afterwards said, you know, my, I don't, you talk a lot about this culture being based on violence, but I don't see it. You know, I'm not violent. And I said, okay, first off, where's your shirt made? And he looked, and it was made in Bangladesh. It's like, look, do we even need to talk about that? He's fucking faking he's dead. Yeah, he's breathing. He's faking he's fucking dead. Yeah, he was playing. Our way of living, industrial civilization, is based on, requires, and will collapse very quickly without persistent and widespread violence. The arcing up with the a large explosion, a large explosion. Wow. I'll just take a couple eggs. How many do you want? Uh, two. Okay. Two is good. Okay. And then what next? Some ham. Great. Tomato. Tomato. Okay. How about that? Okay, some onion. Onion? Ooh, and cheese. Everything then, right? Okay, you yes, want everything. everything. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Okay, we'll just pop this on. Now watch. I'm chopping the ham and veggies, grating the cheese, and whipping the eggs all in three seconds. The machine that just made those smoothies for Berman and Fred will make an omelet. There's not much time left to get this beautiful home diamond necklace less than 50 seconds. Joanne? Absolutely, John. You're going to want to give us a call up to get this beautiful Hope Diamond Necklace. This is a 45.52 carat diamond surrounded by 16 white diamonds. It has a platinum chain bearing 46 more diamonds. These are 12 4 ounce Southern Barbecue Chicken Breasts. These Stuff and Gourmet Farm Fresh Chicken Breasts come from the barnyard to your backyard. They're wonderfully marinated and guaranteed to be tender, juicy, and downright delicious. Fine tune those measurements. We keep them on file. They're saved there on our computer. Go back into the section where you reorder and fine tune those measurements for us. Um, and then we'll have a chance to maybe send you another pair of customized jeans that we really believe are going to fit perfectly. So we're going to do a countdown, uh, starting from five. Everybody got to help me out here. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! It worked. I've spent several years of my life um, doing logging in the woods. I come with a little different perspective than a lot of the, you know, the, the environmental crowd or the, you know, the, the, the logging crowd. I've got a little of both in me. I, I'm, I'm okay with cutting down trees. I just don't have an issue with it. But I, I, I'm not okay with cutting them all down. The, the industry tends to call the environmentalists radical. <laughs> the reality is that 95% of the standing native forests in the United States have been cut down. It's not radical to try and save the last 5%. What's radical is logging 95%. This is radical. America feels that the U.S. Forest Service's job is to protect the forest, but the Forest Service is a part of the Department of Agriculture, and uh, the Department of Agriculture looks upon these forests as crops. The U.S. Forest Service's real job is to provide trees for these timber companies so they can cut these trees for our national forests. I had never seen with my own eyes what kind of world we lived in. I feel like I'm in perpetual mourning, and I have been from the moment that, like, I don't know, that I kind of took the blinders off and was like, holy crap, what the hell are we doing?
I only did one eye. I'm going to do the other eye if you don't release. When, the, when those people were getting attacked and stepped on and pepper sprayed in their face while they were locked down, I thought protest and civil disobedience, what's the point? Why bother? You know, it's not getting us anywhere. We're getting victimized by their, their police, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think, like, I, like a lot of people I knew at the time, like, experienced a massive loss of faith and, like, that systemic change could happen through, you know, the system regulating itself or reforming itself. Well, this is a piece of a, of a big old tree. This tree probably sprouted just about the time Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It looks about 500 years old, somewhere in there. You know, the suckers, if they could talk, probably say it had been pretty boring up until about 75 years ago when all hell broke loose out here on the ridge, and, and uh, they started cutting them down. And most of them are gone now, so we won't be seeing any of these for at least another 500 years, and that's if we leave them alone. These are amazing old trees. I was uh, already quite radicalized, but I couldn't believe the fact that people accepted what was going on. I have memories of like, like for the first time seeing log trucks, you know, and being like, whoa. You saw the mills. Or you go into the forest and you stumble upon a clear cut. Like it just blew me away. Just the, the arrogance of it. I was like, man, this is butchered. You know, it made me think like, why are we being so gentle? Why are we so gentle in our activism when this is what's happening, you know? I met these people in Seattle and I was introduced to kind of a larger group of individuals. Here we are in our black clothes, you know, downtown Seattle is just full of corporations that are wrecking devastation and destruction on the planet. And people were just like, okay, let's do it. These businesses, they're not gonna bow to people dancing in the street. They're not gonna bow to people dressed as, you know, giant sea turtles or so on. They care about one thing, they care about capital. And unless they put a dent in their pocket, what good is How are we gonna business? do that? How are you gonna put a dent in their pocket? Hopefully by causing uh, property damage. Yeah. I never breathed tear gas, pepper spray, or saw rubber bullets or concussion grenades until that point. I mean, it's like insane. I really felt like this is like a war zone. Like, wow, holy crap. Yeah. It felt good to take out my rage on these corporate windows because they had caused so much destruction in my mind. Stop it! Stop it! it created, I think people have a very Pollyanna viewpoint of social change. No real social change has happened without pressure, without force, without, some would say, an intimidating uh, governments and corporations into changing their behavior. It's easy to discount the environmental movement as a, as a bunch of wackos and, and hippies and arsonists. But it's not like that. There are businessmen and, and you know, moms and dads and scientists and, and loggers themselves. There are people from every walk of life that get involved in this. My lawyers at our first meeting, don't ever bring up cooperation as a tactic. We're never going to cooperate. You don't have that card in your back pocket. Don't bring it up. Like, okay, let's do it. These businesses, they're not going to bow to people dancing in the street. They're not going to bow to people dressed as, you know, giant sea turtles or so on. They care about one thing. They care about capital. And unless they put a dent in their pocket, what good is How are we going to do that? How are you going to put a dent in their pocket? Hopefully by causing uh, property damage. Yeah. I never breathed tear gas, pepper spray, or saw rubber bullets or concussion grenades until that point. I mean, it's like insane. I really felt like this is like a war zone. Like, wow, holy crap. Yeah. It 
it felt good to take out my rage on these corporate windows because they had caused so much destruction in my mind. Stop it! Stop it! It created a...